Hi, I'm Pam Forster from Doorpost. I've met a lot of busy moms who want to study the Bible, but they don't feel like they can, they don't know where to start, or they don't feel like they can make the time for it, or they just feel really overwhelmed when they start to study the Bible on their own. Um, I used to feel like that too. Uh, really, Bible study doesn't have to be complicated. Um, there's things you can do that are meaningful Bible study in as little as five minutes at a time. In this short video, I'm going to show you 10 quick, useful study skills that you can use in your own Bible study time. Um, these are a few of the many things that we do in the Busy Mama's Bible study books and in the studies that I've been leading online. So let's pretend we're studying Ephesians 6. The first thing we would do is back up and read the entire book of Ephesians, which isn't that long. Um, it might take more than uh, one opportunity to read through the whole thing and look for who wrote the book, uh, who he's writing to, um, try to get some background about the particular chapter that we're going to be studying. For Ephesians 6, um, going back and reading Acts 19 would be really useful because it is telling us about the beginnings of the Ephesians church. Uh, another thing that we could do is to look for indicatives which are statements of fact. This would be especially useful when we're studying Ephesians 6 because there's so many uh, instructions to us about how we're supposed to live as Christians. Um, going back and reading through the first part of Ephesians and marking everything that Paul says that God has done for us um, helps prepare us for why we should be living um, like God has told us to in response to him thing we could do is, is looking at chapter 6, just go through and mark all the references to God. I usually do this with a yellow pencil. That's just what I've chosen to do, and I, it's something I could do consistently. So you can do this in your Bible. You'd be marking the word Lord, God, um, Jesus. When I mark Jesus, I also put a red cross through it to distinguish it. You'd be going through, and you could do this either in your Bible directly, or if you're not comfortable with that, you could print out the passage and mark on the pieces of paper instead. The fourth thing we could do is look at the specific people that are addressed in this chapter. And I'm going to mark those uh, by circling them with a green pencil. Um, first we see that children are addressed, and they're told to obey their parents. Now we see that fathers are addressed, I'm just skimming quickly. Uh, you'd be reading straight through. Bond servants are addressed. And if we went on, we'd also see that masters are um, given instructions as well. Let's look at what each of those uh, groups of people are told to do. Children, obey your parents. So you're going to underline that with a red pencil. Uh, what are fathers told to do? Uh, do not provoke your children to anger. Uh, and then they're also told instead to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Uh, bond servants are to obey their earthly masters. And you can see we'd just be going through the whole chapter looking for this sort of thing. The sixth thing that we can do with Ephesians 6, after looking at who's being addressed and what they're being told to do, is look for reasons that Paul gives for why they should be doing this. And looking for the word for uh, is a good clue. It, it kind of takes the place of because, and it gives us a signal that a reason is being given. There's, our children are supposed to obey because this is right. Uh, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you and you may live long in the land. Um, what I do when I'm seeing results of obedience like that is just put an arrow that points that way. So same thing, going through, looking specifically at each of these cate um, categories of people and what they're being told and if there's any reasons given for those um, instructions. Next, after we've um, marked all those things on our um, text, we could take a notebook and draw up a little chart that would help us organize what we found. Who's being addressed? What are they being told to do, and why they're 
um, going to do it? What are the reasons that are being given in the passage? Just organizing like this helps us see better what's being said, and it also is one more time going through our brains, and we get more and more out of the passage as we continue to study. Another thing we could do is look for contrast, and the word but, or the other word however, are good signals for the fact that we're being seeing some contrast. Um, the word but shows up right here. We see that fathers are not supposed to provoke their children to anger, but they're supposed to bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. We're seeing what we're not supposed to do, and then what we're supposed to do instead. Again, we'd see the same sort of thing down here uh, related to the bond servants. The word but is signaling that to us. Okay, two more things that we could do that involve the computer, and specifically a Bible study website that I really appreciate that's very, very helpful. It's called Blue Letter Bible. I'll go there. We're going to look up Ephesians 6, 4, the verse about fathers not provoking their children to wrath. Let's see if there's any other verses in the Bible that are related to this topic. By going over here to the Tools button, and you hover over that, it opens up a drop-down menu. We go down to Cross References, which are other verses in the Bible related to this verse. And we're going to scroll down. We won't take time to look at all the details of this. Uh, actually, we're going to scroll back up. There we go, Colossians 3.21. We have another um, version of the same idea, but this one gives us a reason that we might want to add into our chart. Um, fathers shouldn't be provoking their children to anger, or they're going to become discouraged. And that's an important thing to uh, remember as we're reading this other verse in Ephesians 6. The thing we can do with the Blue Letter Bible, well, there's actually a lot of things, but one that we'll look at right now is looking at the meaning of the original Greek words that were used in these verses. We're going to look at Ephesians 6, 1 this time, and what does the word obey mean? If our children are supposed to obey us, what does that mean? So we go over here to Tools again, and this time we're going to click Interlinear. And this takes us to this window. This is called uh, a lexicon. We're going to click right here. This is a number that's called a Strong's number. It's a reference number that's going to take us to a lot of information about the word. So we click on that number, and it gives us all this information about that particular word. So we go down here to outline a biblical usage and we get a basic idea, what does this word mean? Um, and specifically, I think this particular definition fits to hearken to a command, to obey, be obedient, submit to. It involves listening. That's an important thing for us to remember when we're asking our children to obey us. They have to listen before they can obey. We have 10 easy uh, Bible study techniques that you could take and run with on your own. Or if you want, you could um, try out one of the Busy Mama's Bible studies uh, where we take a chapter or a topic and study it for 30 days. Uh, I would be giving you step-by-step -step instructions each day using some of these same techniques and uh, several others. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, when I learned how to study in these ways, I got really excited about studying the Bible and I saw uh, more clearly how it applied to my uh, everyday life. Um, I hope these can help you as well.